my name is Jakara Lewis. Um, first, I want to say welcome to all of our new members. So glad that you guys were able to find the group so that you can get in with us on these really great videos and of course, voice your questions, comments, or concerns. So this week, I'm pushing to post all the videos that go along with the book and they focus on every single topic that you guys will see on the math portion just to kind of give you an idea of some of the tips and tricks that I give you guys in order to help you to be successful. So today we're gonna to talk about percentages. Um, percentages is a really, really, really big topic in the sense that there are so many different questions that they can ask you guys in reference to percentages. Um, some of the questions can be really cut and dry, but most of the questions are gonna consist of word problems. Um, the really good thing about this particular topic, which is solving real world problems involving percentages, is that most of the questions, they put you in scenarios um, in reference to things that you deal with on a regular basis. So today we're going to talk about, uh, one, two, we're going to discuss five topics. I broke it up into two parts because I know that um, percentages are really vast and I don't like to put too much information in one video because it kind of makes you hard, it makes it a lot harder for you to stay attentive because I know I can be like that sometimes as well. So today we're going to cover percentage increase percentage decrease and we're also going to look at tax tip and discount so tax tip and discount is always super easy for most people because of course that's something that we deal with on a regular basis when we're going to patronize restaurants when we're shopping these are some things that we're already kind of familiar with so it shouldn't really be um that difficult of a topic of course a lot of the stuff that i do i do shorten it um if you guys are new to this and then you should know that I'm the author of the Kiss It series, T's Math Edition, where Kiss It is um, an acronym for Keep It Super Simple. So my goal is always to take all the topics that we discuss and condense them down so that it's not hard for you to be able to, the, to retain the information. And that's the issue is that sometimes when people are studying for tests such as the T's, um, you have a really hard time retaining it. And when you get to your test, you kind of just draw a blank. So of course, I'm here to help you to be able to bypass that and to be successful along your journey. Um, as I am speaking, make sure if you have any questions, just drop it in the comments and I'll be sure to um, answer it. My iPad is up and running today, so I definitely, if you see me looking um, over to this side, I'm just looking at comments um, and ready to answer them for you guys, okay? All right, so all of the examples that we do come directly from the book. Um, of course, if you're interested in the book, make sure that you inbox me and I can get you um, a copy over right now. We only have unofficial versions because we're still going through... Um, different samples so I can make sure that I'm really happy with what the end product is okay all right so first things first is percentage increase and decrease so you can definitely complete this in three steps sometimes people tend to overthink the particular process but it's really um, an easy topic to be able to grasp so the question says the normal price of denim jeans in house of JYL is $40 so I know okay my normal price is $40 but today they're on sale for $25 okay so it's dropped down what is the percent decrease in price so anytime you deal with percentage increase or percentage decrease you're always gonna approach them the same way the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna create a fraction you're going to create a fraction because we're going to have certain values up top and we're going to have a certain value at the bottom, okay? And I always say anytime we get into the position to where we're starting to practice our math and we're looking at certain topics, you have to create what are called triggers so that when you see the question, you automatically know in your head, okay, this is the setup. So I know myself when I see percentage increase and decrease, I know to automatically set up a fraction because that's what, that's what I'm going to have to utilize in order to be able to solve. So when we do our fraction, the top is always going to be the difference between the two values that we start with. And of course, we never want a negative value. So in this instance, we're going to do $40 minus $25. Okay. So when I wrote it out, I said subtract the two values. This is how it looks in the book. And then we're always going to divide by the original value. So original is always going to depend on context, meaning what value did we start with. If we're looking for a percent decrease, in this sense, we went from 40 to 25, my original value always has to be the larger number because that's where I started. So in this case, it would be 40. Of course, if it was a percent increase, which is the opposite, it would always be the smaller number. So when we say original value... And this is whatever number we started with, okay? And that's never going to change given the scenario. So this is a guaranteed method to work every time 
you have percentage increase or decrease as long as you understand context and this is the part that messes people up because people can say oh okay i can always remember to subtract we got that part but you have to know what number to divide by okay and that's definitely going to be the most important so if we do 40 minus 25 that's going to give us 15 over 40 and of course, if we're looking for a percentage, if we have a fraction, we have to go from a fraction to a percent. So this goes back to our sub skill again that we talked about in cluster one. Those sub skills, especially converting fractions, decimals, and percents, as well as applying estimation strategies, are going to be something that you guys are going to use throughout the test. And they apply um, most to word problems. So this is another scenario to where when you see it, you have to know first things first, I want to change this to a decimal. I do that by dividing my top number by my bottom number. So when I do 15 divided by 40 I get 0.375 and then from there of course I have to make it a percentage so I have to move my decimal two places to the right which makes it 37.5 percent okay all right, a good thing for some of you guys to do um, as you're watching videos, I know some of you may be at work, you may be moving around, but when you have time to actually sit down and watch the videos, <clears throat> go back and listen to the questions as I say them and write them out so that you'll have the work to go along with it because I, I don't have the space to write out the actual problem that would take too long. So that would be my best advice. As I do the videos, write out the example problem so that you have them as a reference because you always want to have some type of practice as a reference so that when you practice on your own, if you make a mistake, you can compare what you did and what I did and kind of see where the misstep is. All right, so let's go to our next example. So it says, during the summer, movie tickets cost $5, but once fall begins, the normal price of $8.75 is reinstated. So I know the summer price is $5. Once the fall starts, they're gonna reinstate the regular price of $8.75. So the question of course says, what is the percent increase in price? So if we're in a scenario, we know our trigger, the first thing to do is we're gonna create a fraction. We know that I'm gonna subtract my two values up top. And I know I'm going to divide by the original value. So what is the original value? Where did we start? We started with the 5 because we're talking about percent increase. So if we're doing percent increase, the original value always has to be the smaller number. And this is exactly the opposite of what we did the last time. So that's why I say context is important. A lot of people get the top right, but then they tend to guess, well, what do I divide by? Do I always divide by the larger number? Do I always divide by the smaller number? And you don't want to get that particular um, habit. You want to understand context, meaning where did I start? Did I start high? Did I start low? In this case, we started low and it went back up. So we're going to divide by five. All right, so if we do A75, <coughs> if we do A75 minus five, that's going to give us 375 divided by five, which would give us 0.75. And then we know to change a decimal to a percent, we move it two places to the right, which would give us 75. I'm horrible at writing upside down. It'll give us 75%. All right, so of course, as I'm going, if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. And as I mentioned before, as I read the word problems out, because it's not conducive for me to write the whole problem, um, write them out to use them as a reference. All right, and that's just the gist of percentage increase and decrease. So that topic is very cut and dry, it's very to the point, but sometimes people tend to miss it because they don't spend enough time studying it. You have to know how to hone in on the specifics of certain topics. So even though the general topic is solving real world problems involving percentages, you have to know, well, what type of scenario are they gonna put me in? I just showed you two. You can either have a percentage increase situation or you can have a percentage decrease situation. And you always, 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 one, wanna utilize your calculator because you don't want to make a mistake. And two, you need to create those triggers in your mind so that when you see it, you're not overthinking the situation, okay? All right, so tax tip and discount is what we're going to look at. Um, The problem with tax tip and discount is that sometimes people will people will interchange them. So they, they may be able to get to a final answer, but context-wise, they may not 
answer it correctly. And that's the issue is that you just have to know the difference between when you're paying tax, when you're paying tip, and when you're paying discount. The issue is that sometimes a question may ask you, okay, well, how much of a discount did you get? Versus how much was your, how much did you pay at checkout with your discount? So you have to know the difference between the two, okay? All right, so if we look at our next example, it says Tori purchased a pair of jeans for $24.99, a blouse for $12.95, and a necklace for $6.99. So let's write that down. So she got a pair of jeans for $24.99. She got a blouse for $12.95. And she got a necklace for $6.99. So these are her total purchases so far. All right, it says, if the sales tax rate is 6.5% in Florida, Florida, Florida um, how much will she pay in taxes? So we know the tax rate is 6.5%. And the question says, how much will she pay in taxes? This is the thing. People have to know how to decipher the difference between specifically focusing on taxes and your total including the tax. And that's what I'm going to show you guys today. All right, so anytime we're talking about um, tax tip or discount, right, the first thing that you always have to do is you always have to find the total of whatever your purchase is, first and foremost. We need to know, okay, well, how much money am I spending before we even think about tax, before we even think about any of that stuff, okay? So if we do $24.99 plus $12.95 plus $6.99, that's going to give us $44.93. All right, and that's my, that's my total of my items before... I figure out what my tax is, okay? Anytime you're dealing with percentages and we have word problems, that percent always has to be changed to a decimal, okay? You can never do any physical math with a number in percent form. It always has to be converted, okay? And that goes right back to our sub skill of converting fractions, decimals, and percents. That's what I. That's why I keep reiterating it, and we're going to say it in every video um, that we do because that sub skill is always going to arise. So you want to make sure you master that as early as possible so that when you get to questions like this, you're not making those small mistakes because it's a mistake as simple as not converting this to a decimal and using 6.5 instead of the correct number could throw you all the way off, okay? All right, and we know that in order to change a percent to a decimal, we have to move the decimal two places to the left. Of course, since we have an empty scoop, we have to fill that in. So that's going to be 0 0.06. All right, and then what we're going to do is we're going to multiply these two values together. And that's going to tell me how much she's going to pay in taxes, okay? So we're going to do 44.93 times 0 0.06, which gives us $2.92. And that tells us how much she pays in taxes. And that's the, that's the problem is that most people have a misstep because they don't understand the context of the problem. So you have to understand exactly what they're asking you. So I'm going to reread the problem again. I'm going to show you guys step by step exactly what I did. So the question says, Tori purchased a pair of jeans for $24.99. So jeans are $24.99. A blouse for $12.95. And a necklace for $6.99. If the sales tax rate is 6.5% in Florida, how much did she pay? Well, how much will she pay in taxes? So that's what we're trying to figure out. So the first step, anytime you're dealing with tax tip or discount, you always want to find the total of the items that you purchase. So total means we add, of course. So when we added all three values, which included our jeans, blouse, and necklace, we came up with $44.93. Anytime you're dealing with percentages in terms of word problems, that percent always has to be converted to a decimal. You cannot do any physical math with a number in percent form because it's not going to be correct, okay? And that goes back to our sub skills. So in order to convert a percent to a decimal, you move your decimal two places to the left, which gave us point, which gave us point zero six. All right, so we have our total and we have our percentage. 
and we're going to multiply those two together which gave us two dollars and 92 cents and that's how much she paid in taxes that's specifically what the question asked the question said how much will she pay in taxes okay and of course if you guys have any questions as i'm going feel free to let me know all right so as we move into our next example it's going to be the same exact scenario but the end game is going to change so it says tori purchased a pair of jeans for 24.99 a blouse for 12.95 <clears throat> and a necklace for 6.99 if the sales tax rate is 6.5 percent in florida how much will she pay at checkout <laughs> so now the scenario is changing now our first example is that well how much will she pay in taxes this time they want to know, okay, well, how much is she going to pay at checkout? The only difference is that checkout is going to include my total and my taxes. So this is normal for us. When we go to a store and we purchase certain things, we're going to pay our total plus the tax. So that's the difference. The problem is that most people will bypass the part where they ask you specifically for taxes or for discount or for the tip, and they go straight to checkout. They go straight to your total, and you have to know the difference between the two, okay? All right, so it's only one extra step when we do this. I'm just rewriting this to give me some more room. So we still go about it the same way in this scenario. What we're gonna do is we're gonna find the total of our items, which gave us 44.93. We convert our percent to a decimal, which gave us 0 0.06. We multiply our percentage and our total together which gave us $2.92 in taxes. So what we're gonna do with this $2.92 is we're gonna take this and we're gonna add this to the total of our items. That's gonna tell me how much I'm gonna pay at checkout. So it's just one additional step, okay? That's gonna be the difference between this question and the last question that we did. So $44.93 plus the $2.92 which gives us $47.85, $47.85. Okay, so I'll walk through the problem one more time. All right, so the question says, Tori purchased a pair of jeans for $24.99, a blouse for $12.95, and a necklace for $6.99. If the sales tax rate in Florida is 6.5%, how much will she pay at checkout? So I want you guys to know the difference between this question and the previous question, which asked how much would she pay in taxes, okay? So of course, we um, start the problem off the same way. Anytime you're dealing with tax tip and discount, you always wanna find the total of whatever you're purchasing. So we added our, our jeans, our blouse, and our necklace, and that gave us $44.93. Anytime you're dealing with percentages, you always have to convert that percent to a decimal. You cannot do any physical math with numbers in percent form. So to convert a percent to a decimal, you move the decimal two places to the left, which gave us 0 0.06. Now we took our total and our decimal and we multiplied them together, which gave us $2.92, and that's how much we would pay in taxes. The question says, how much will you pay at checkout? So at checkout is gonna be my total plus taxes, which is $44.93 plus $2.92, which gave us a total of $47.85 at checkout, okay? And of course, if anybody has any questions as I'm going along, feel free to drop them in the comments if you have um, missed it, if you're just joining us. Um, the best thing to do as I'm doing the word problems is to write the problem down as I'm saying it because it's just not conducive for me to write it all out on this really little board. Now when I get my larger board, then I won't have a problem writing them out for you guys, okay? All right, our next example. Now we're moving into discounts. So now we just talked about taxes. Now we're moving into discounts. It's still almost the same kind of vibe. We're gonna really set it up the same way. The execution at the end is just a little bit different, but it's still the same exact scenario. All right, so follow me. Cause she's still, oh Jesus, she's still purchasing the same stuff. So Tori purchased a pair of jeans for $24.99. Jeez, Tori made a lot of purchases. Um, she purchased a blouse for, I should know by now, for $12.95, and she purchased a necklace for $6.99, right? Yeah, and she purchased a necklace for $6.99. So still dealing with the same items. All right, it says the store is having a sale for 25% off. All right, so the sale is 
20, ooh, 25% off. The question wants to know how much of a discount does she receive off of her purchase? So again, looking at the specifics of what they're asking, that is gonna, that's what it's actually gonna come down to is making sure that you understand how to identify what they're asking you specifically. That's why people have a really hard time with word problems because they may see it and I'm really, I'm really okay with percentages and I kind of know what I'm doing, but context wise, what are they asking you to execute? What should your answer look like? Because it's the difference, just like when we did our last two problems, it's a big difference between what I pay in taxes and what my total is. And if you're understanding the context, if you make a mistake and you get to your answer, you should be able to look at your answer and tell whether or not you're in the right ballpark or not, okay? All right, so same thing. Anytime I'm dealing with any type of purchase and we're talking about tax tip or discount, we always, always, always have to find the total of the items that we picked up. So we're going to do... I thought I had a blue marker. I do. We're going to do... $24.99 plus $12.95 plus $6.99, which gave us the $44.93. So that's going to be my total. All right. So remember what I told you guys. Anytime we're dealing with percentages, I can't do any physical math with percentages. So we have to convert it to a what? We have to convert it to a decimal, which means we have to move the decimal two places to the left. Um, if you guys are given whole numbers, like 25%, you automatically place the decimal at the end of the number, okay? So that gives us 0.25. Oh, Lord. Mm, 0.25. All right, and if I want to find how much of a discount I'm going to get, it's the same thing as how, how much I'm going to pay actually in taxes. I'm just going to take these two values and I'm going to multiply them together. All right, so we're gonna do the 44.93 times the 0.25, which gives us $11.23. And context-wise, for this particular problem, that means what? That means that we're gonna get, oh, my iPad died. But I'll, I'll check to see if you guys have questions. Um, context-wise, yeah, context-wise, that means that she's gonna get a discount of $11.23. All right, so if we walk through our problem one more time, it says Tori purchased a pair of jeans for $24.99, a blouse for $12.95, and a necklace for $6.99. If the store is having a sale for 25% off, how much of a, of a discount is she going to receive? So when we say discount, how much money is it going to be off of her total purchase? So first things first, anytime we're dealing with tax tip and discount, you always wanna find the total of the items that you grabbed, so we added everything and we got $44.93. Um, anytime we're dealing with percentages, especially with word problems or in general, you cannot do any physical math with a number in percent form. I guess addition. You can't do any multiplication with it. So in order to convert our percent to a decimal, we moved it two places to the left, which gave us 0.25. In this scenario, what we did was we multiplied our percentage and our total, which gave us $11.23, which was how much of a discount she received okay so segueing into our next problem it's the same scenario but it's a little different now they want to know how much would she pay at checkout so Tori purchased all of these items the store is having to sell for 25 percent off but now they want to know okay with the sale how much is she going to pay at checkout now it's changing the ball game a little bit now and that's why i say you guys have to have enough practice with these because that's really what the math all comes down to is if you have enough practice if you're exposed to the questions enough then you won't find yourself in a boat to where you're continuously second guessing yourself and that's what i tell people all the time like you have to put yourself in so many different scenarios with the math that when you get to your test nothing is surprising you nothing is blowing your mind nothing is making you feel like i've never seen this before and that was definitely my goal when i put the book together is i wanted to create every single scenario possible that they could give you so that you could say okay well i did take time and i did practice this particular topic so even with tax tip and discount there are questions that specifically focus on how much you pay in tax there are questions that specifically focus on how much you pay at checkout including in tax just like we're doing now questions about how much of a discount do you receive how much do you pay at checkout with your discount so it's so 
many different things, okay? All right, so in this sense, now, of course, we know that discounts are going to be a lot different because discounts are money off. So if you think about context-wise ch at checkout, if I know that my total is $44.93 and my discount came up to $11.23, if I want to know my total at checkout, instead of adding, I'm actually going to do what? We're going to subtract because we know discounts take money off. So we're going to do... Uh, let me put discount. So that you guys are aware when you guys go back and watch the video. So we're going to do the $44.93 minus the $11.23, which gave us $33.70. And of course, with this problem, I, I didn't include the tax because I wanted, I wanted it to be real cut and dry. Um, this particular test in terms of level of difficulty, I will always say is it's not a very, very difficult test in terms of math. They're not going to make it overly hard. And if you haven't taken a test or even if you have taken a test, you should know just by looking at some of the problems that in terms of difficulty, it's not that hard. They're not going to give you questions that are four, five, and six steps at the most, maybe three steps in terms of your word problems. But other than that, they're not asking you to overstrain yourself. So just to go through the question one more time. It said, Tori purchased a pair of jeans for $24.99, a blouse for $12.99, and a necklace for $6.95. Um, a store is having a sale for 25% off. How much will she pay at checkout, including her discount? Okay. So first things first, anytime I'm doing tax tip and discount, I know y'all tired of hearing me say that, but I have to keep saying it so that you can ingrain it in your mind. So when you see it, you'll know that tax tip and discount, I always have to add my values together. So that gave me a total of $44.93. Anytime I'm dealing with percentages, especially with word problems, I always have to convert that to a decimal, meaning I had to move my decimal two places to the left, which gave me 0.25. So once I have my total and my percentage converted to a decimal, I'm going to multiply those two together, which gave me $11.23, and it let me know how much my actual discount was. Now, to figure out my total at checkout, I had to subtract my discount from my total, because anytime we're doing a discount, we're taking money off which gave me $33.70, which was paid at checkout. So the most important part of these particular problems today is understanding context. I just want to make sure that you guys understand the difference between when they ask you how much you pay in taxes or how much is your actual discount versus how much you pay at checkout, including those items, okay? That's really the biggest thing that I have seen in terms of the mistake that people make is they they jump the gun and they add everything they multiply their percentage and they're like oh this is my total and it's just like i mean and they add them together subtract them it's just like wait do you understand context do you know what they're asking you and that's going to be the most important thing All right, moving on to our next question. Now we're talking about tips. So we did tax, we did discount, now we're looking at tips. All right, it says, Adrian and her friends went out to dinner at Longhorn Steakhouse for their girls' night. Her food costs $23.95. So Adrian was $23.95. Michelle's food costs $42.50. And Gloria's food costs $18.95. If they decide to tip the waitress 15%. I don't know why I always write the dollar sign for percentages. So weird. If they decide to tip the waitress 15%, how much will they pay in gratuity? So, of course, gratuity is just another word for how much is the tip. Make sure you guys know that. That should be something that everybody is familiar with at this point, though. All right. So, Adrienne spent $23.95. Michelle spent $42.50. And Gloria spent $18.95. They decided.
Okay, wait, I'm back. All right, so just to go over the problem again, it says Adrian and her friends went out to dinner at Longhorn Steakhouse for the girls' night. Um, Adrian's food was $23.95. Michelle's food was $42.50. And Gloria's food was $18.95. If they decided, if they decided, <laughs> if they decided collectively to tip the waitress 15%, how much would they pay in gratuity? A gratuity is just another word for how much you're actually going to pay for your tip. So just as we did with tax, tax and discounts, First things first is you always have to find a total of whatever you're getting. So we're going to add $23.95, $42.50, and $18.95, which gave us $85.40. All right, we know anytime we're dealing with percentages and word problems or any math of sort, we have to convert it to a decimal. So I move the decimal two places to the left, which gives us 0.15. All right, and then from here, we're going to multiply our percentage value as a decimal times our total. Which gave us $12.81. And that's how much they're going to pay in gratuity. So just to revisit the question again from the top, Adrian and her girls go out to Longhorn Steakhouse for dinner. Adrian's total came up to $23.95. Michelle's total came up to $42.50. And Gloria's total came up to $18.95. They decided collectively as a group to tip the waitress 15%. So the question says, how much would they pay in gratuity? That's just how much are they going to tip the waitress? So, of course, as we did with tax and discounts, y'all always want to find a total or whatever we're spending, which gave us $85.40. We always have to convert our percent to a decimal by moving the decimal two places to the left, which gave us 0.15. And we multiplied those two values together, which gave us $12.81, which is how much they're going to pay in gratuity. Okay? All right, of course, so the extension of this question is always one extra step, which is, okay, given this scenario, how much would they pay including their tip? So what's going to be their total bill with the tip? That's going to be the question. All right, so we treated just as we treated all of our other questions. So I'll read it again. Adrian and her friends went out to dinner at Lone Corn Steakhouse for their girls' night. Adrian's food cost $23.95. Michelle's food cost $12. $42.50 and Gloria's food cost $18.95. They decided collectively to tip the waitress 15%. So what is their total bill including the tip? So first things first, we have to add all of, all of our values together, which gave us $85.40. Convert our percent to a decimal, which gave us 0.15. Multiply those two values together, which gave us $12.81, which represents how much of a tip the waitress got all right so if we want to know the, their total at checkout what we're going to do is we're going to add the tip and our total so we're going to do our 85 dollars and 40 cents which was their total plus the tip which was 12 dollars and 81 cents which gave us Oh, well, I probably can do it myself, though. Um, oh, $98. That was right. $98.21. All right, so one more time for my people who kind of have a hard time grasping the whole concept, especially with the math being this way. Adrian and her friends went to Longhorn Steakhouse for their girls' night. Adrian's total came up to $23.95. Michelle's total came up to $42.50. And Gloria's total came up to $18.95. They decided collectively to tip the waitress 15%. So what is their total bill including the tip? 
Anytime we deal with tax 10 bit discount, y'all just want to find the total of whatever items we have purchased, which came up to $85.40. Our percentage always has to be converted to a decimal before we can do any real math, so that's 0.15. We multiply those two values together to give us $12.81, which told us how much our tip was. We wanted to know what was the total bill, including the tip. So what we had to do was add our $85.40 plus the $12.81, which is our tip, which gave us $98.21, which is their total bill, including the tip. Expensive girls night, huh? Wonder who put the bill for that one. All right, all right, all right. So I am very long-winded and I need to grab me some water before I go ahead and do part two. But if you're just tuning in or if you caught the tail end of it, today was part one of percentages. What we did was we discussed percentage increase, percentage decrease and we also took a look at tax tip and discount um percentages cover a big variety of topics and the, the problem is that some people don't know how to study correctly in a sense that they don't know which topics to focus on so what i did was what i did was i took the topics that i felt like you guys are most likely to see i broke them down in terms of giving you examples of how to execute them and i also paired them with tons of um practice questions to make sure that you guys are retaining the information. So of course, um, if you don't know, the book contains over 1400 practice questions and I wanted to make sure that I gave you guys good content as well as good practice. A lot of the books on the market are not a good combination of both and I only say that from my personal experience with tutoring with the T's. I've been tutoring for this test for about six years now and I've always had to put my own materials together which kind of inspired me to do the book because I got so tired of doing that. So when I say good content, I have good breakdowns, I have great examples. When I say good practice, I have more than enough practice to put you in a position to where you're able to retain it. It's just all in how you practice and of course putting your, putting yourself in the best space to get to your end game, right? So I'll be back in a few. I mean, let my iPad charge for a little bit so I'll be able to see some questions and comments. Um, and we'll be doing part two of percentages, which is percentage markups and markdowns, as well as percent proportions. And then um, a little later on, what I'll do is I'll go over some more of the questions from the diagnostic review, I believe is um, questions nine through 16, which covers everything in cluster two. Um, all the topics um, that are included on the test, which, which is 15 topics, um, have been broken down into five clusters. What I did was I grouped topics together based on how similar they are in terms of solving, so that it's easier for you to be able to retain. So if you guys notice, cluster two, which I started yesterday, includes ratios, proportions, and percentages, and they're very similar in terms of setting up. As you guys saw yesterday, ratios and proportions are very, very, very similar in terms of how to execute and solve. And I just segue into percentages because they're still in the same family, okay? There are no other books on the market that are doing that. Um, I haven't seen that and that I can definitely um, say that that comes from my years in the classroom understanding how they cluster topics together so that kids are able to build the skills on top of each other as well as retain uh, as you guys can see all of our topics from the first cluster are sub skills that we are continuously using um, in these word problems and we will use them in cluster three and cluster four and cluster five um, to make sure that you guys are successful. So thank you so much for giving me your time. Welcome again to all the new members. If you guys know anybody else who's studying for the test, especially if you guys are in the other groups, make sure you um, add them or invite them to the group so they can get a lot of these good free resources. Today I'm going to add some files to um, the file tab so that you guys can have extra practice as well. And we'll just go from there. So I'll see you guys in a few for part two of my video with solving real world problems involving percentages. Thank you.